out of depression. Never my intention. Regret it in the morning. I regret it in the morning. No, oh, oh. Love drug, love drugs. Coming up, coming up. Oh, love drug, love drugs. Love drug, love drugs. Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's happening? This is You Source Media. I'm your host with the most, Rock Quest from Get Em Entertainment. Today we got a special guest, first female on, on the show. You know what I mean? So this is real special. Um, ladies and gentlemen, meet Sophia right here. How you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I ain't too bad at all. You know what I mean? I've heard a lot about you. We ain't got a chance to meet yet till today. You know That's what I mean? Right. I wanted to meet you on early on, but you know... You got a hectic schedule, yes, you're moving fast, been. you're doing your thing. Tell me, how, how did you get involved in the music um, scene? I actually started in music with writing, so it was not particularly, I was writing a lot. Okay. So that, that was the start, the start of the chapter with music was the end of another journey. So when I was 16, 17, I didn't get to complete school. And, um, you know, rather than getting into trouble, I was, you know, blessed enough to have an opportunity to um, spit on the microphone in somebody's studio, and, and that felt so liberating. I heard you say spit. So spit, <laughs> that goes for MCs. So, because I'm that, thinking, you know, she that, could be a singer, she could be anything. <laughs> so I heard you say spit, so that means you rap too? I do rap too, yeah. That was the first thing that came out at that time, actually. So it was not uh, particularly singing vocally. Yeah. It was rapping. So the first time when he said, oh, do you want to jump behind the mic and do something? I was, I think, you know, being 16, 17, having a lot of uh, you know, turmoil, inner turmoil, I had a lot to say, and that was just coming out as, that's why I said spit. So you've been rapping for a while, so <laughs> yeah, so it's just been a while, and you sing too. I do sing too. That's what's up, so you write all, all your own uh, material? I write all of my material. That's what's up, that's what's up. <laughs> now check this out, while we're talking, I'm hearing an accent over there, you know what I mean? So, well, what's your background? Where um, are you from, uh, what's your background? Originally from Mauritius. Hi, there you go, yes. that's what's up. We know, do yeah, we know? I know because is, I yeah. ask, because sometimes people are like, yeah, Mauritius, yeah, and they're yeah. like, I'm like, do you know where it is? They're like, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know where Mauritius is. That's what's yeah. up, I got some Mauritian friend, as a matter of fact. That's so, great. You know, um, wow, so that's where the accent comes from. And you speak French, I'm guessing? I speak French. And Creole. And Creole, correct. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up, correct. so there you go. Tell me a little bit more about yourself. Who is Sophia? Tell me. Um, uh, well, Sophia is uh, someone who has learned to turn a lot of pain into gain. There you um, go. You know, so I do encourage the path of healing, self-healing through looking at our own experiences and kind of like taking, uh, being accountable for them. So yeah. there's a fine line between being like, oh, this has happened to me, um, and oh, this is what I'm going to do with what's happened. Yes. You know, but it's a mindset. So. Yeah. You know, we're never, we don't know, I don't, you didn't choose the cards you were dealt with, I didn't choose my cards either, um, but I know I'm, I have a responsibility to do what's right by me and by people around me. So has it been a long time, the passion for music? Yes, it has yeah. been, it has been. I think it was my, my, my way through everything, really. There you, you know, there you all go. the emotions that you go through and you've, you're always going to find a specific track or an artist that's just going to be like, that's exactly what I had to listen to right now. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. So um, who are you listening to right now? Like who, you know, internationally, you know, before we get to um, Australia and, you know, um, out here internationally, who, who are you listening to? Uh, well, I really like Cesar because I really like her writing. I okay. think it's very, very deep. And, and obviously she's a great singer as well. Yeah. Um, you know, and... Uh, I try to get through into the, a bit of the underground world because sometimes what we see is not the art that is actually out there. Like yep. you know, we are we are only showing what people want us to sh to see. Yes. Um, yes. And so I like to dig a bit deeper and listen to those female rappers, um, uh, you know, and singers who are also coming up in other parts of the world. What's the hustle been out here like for you with the music industry? What's it, um, you know, what trials and tribulations have you gone through? And um, as far as just the hustle itself, trying to be, be a musician out here. It's quite challenging. Um, I would say it's also got to do with the type of music. Yep. You know, if I was probably into, you know, a different genre that Australia really supports, such as 
heavy metal or the rock, I probably will have a lot more opportunities out there yep. in regards to the performances. There are more live bar, uh, live gigs. Um, you know, when you're coming up as a, 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 a black artist, we've, you know, trying to do something for, the, for reggae and rap, it's not as supported. This is what I feel. Yeah, yeah. And now it's difficult enough for, you know, um, black artists and now as a black woman yep i get tr double the trouble <laughs> i hear you i hear you yeah, yeah. I, I know the struggles you know, I know the struggles yeah oh, I, as a black man i really do know the struggles um i, I hear what you're saying mm. you know like, you're independent too yes i am all right so so that's that's double the hustle that's double the hustle that's true that's true so um what's the favorite era of music you like and why so it could be an era from like you know the 80s, 90s, 2000s, right now, you know, any of them eras, you know, what's... Um, yeah. Really like the 90s, man. I yeah. really, really like the 90s. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I just, I think that at that time, whew, something happened in the music. There was a switch. Yeah, they, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, of the things that were talk, uh, spoken about. And look, I can't also, like, forget the fact that we had, like, Destiny's Child, Things where, you know, before, before them, and groups like TLC and TLC, so on, yeah. you know, women were trying to rap like men. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, be, be very tomboyish into, yeah. into because that's, that's how it was portrayed. Rap was a very masculine. Yeah. A lot of the ladies were wearing on big baggy yeah. jeans. I remember Leah doing it. Yeah. TLC doing it. And how about Queen Latifah, man? There you go. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it, that didn't really change. That didn't change. Until little Kim came around. Yes. You know what I mean? That's, That's really going to lighten up a lot of stuff. That's true. That's true. She brought a different vibe to it completely. And, not, you know, there were a lot of controversies around it at the time. Yeah. Still are till today, um, yeah. you know. But it's interesting to see how much we can, we are versatile and how we can grow from anything, really. So then when you had those super empowering artists, such as Destiny's Child yeah. and, you know, their lyrics were just like, oh, my gosh, as a young black girl, you're like... I'm a survivor. I can do this. Yes, a lot of people say that's 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 the golden, the golden era for hip hop, soul, mm. and rap and stuff. You know the whole new jack swing from Black Street and all them guys back then. Um, what would you say? Would you would you agree to that or disagree? Would you think that's that would be the the best era? You know, of the time. I do think so. I, I agree I on do. that too. You know, <laughs> you know well. it's amazing what came out at that time. It's like the artistry was unstoppable yeah you know from all walks of life different stories people were not trying to be a certain way everyone yeah. was comfortable to come with who, what they had to what offer they had. it was all different yeah all different and they were saying something yes so who have you worked with out here in australia because um you did say you rap you sing um while we were talking i heard you even say um you do a bit of reggae too so who, who have you worked with out here um independently or you know, um, majorly in Australia? Look, um, I haven't yet had an opportunity to collaborate with anyone uh, mm -hmm. as yet, though I did have a few uh, conversations with fellow artists. Yep. Um, you know, being a solo artist, sometimes it has its disadvantages. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If you have a band and you, if you have a group, um, you know, you have different ways of networking, different type of opportunities. Yeah. As a solo artist, I had to myself get out of my own shell and realize you can't just sit home and make music on your own and you can't just hit the studio and then go back home. It, I had to come out like, okay, I need to meet people and, and I need network. to build relationships, yeah. you know, understand. which is, I think, where I am now, especially after COVID, you know, we were just indoors. So that part just became natural to just do music from behind a screen and, you know, and I was blaming for all the COVID for it. Then the lockdowns were lifted and yeah. I was still sitting at home. I hear that. Because yeah. you were you were telling me before that throughout um COVID you you recorded an album. I did, I did. So my first album, um uh, Taboo. So yeah. Taboo is uh, the main uh, track of that album. Um I wrote and uh, recorded all of the album during COVID, during wow. lockdown. Wow, that's yeah, incredible. At home. Mm. Yeah, I mean something to do. Fill up the time. You have to, and that's the time that I was able to get a lot more um deeper with myself because everything was quiet down. The world was shut. No doubt. There was no distraction. Yeah. And rather than sitting down going, oh my God, you know, what's happening? And the anxiety is building up. I took that moment to kind of go, okay, well, maybe it's time to listen to your own thoughts. 
and put it some work. And put it to work. And I'll, I'll, you'll be amazed sometimes what, what, what's going on inside that we, no, we don't get to hear because everything is so loud. Yeah, and, and you know what? It's a healing process, the whole writing. Because I used to be an artist myself, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? From rapping and singing and all the rest of the stuff. You know, so um, writing really does heal a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's pain or happiness, it can bring back old memories. You know what I mean? So I dig what you're saying. That is so true. And then you also know, like, um, there are things, like, in a conversation, um, the, the words might not flow as easily. And then you pick up a pen and paper, you're like, oh, wow. Don't know where that came from. And you. suddenly you have an insight into, that's actually how I feel. I've been trying to say that, but I couldn't say it. But I've re now I can say it on a track. There you go. <laughs> you can, and, and you can, yeah, you can be free with it and do what you want you to do. You can be it. free, correct. I hear what you're saying. <laughs> so if you had it all, what would it look like? If you had everything that you wanted, you know, um, with life, you know what I mean? Be successful, you know what I mean? Music or anything else in general. If you had it all, what would it look like? That's such an uninteresting question, <laughs> you know, because we work, we work towards goals, but then we're like, okay, what does that actually look like? And, yeah. You know, I don't have a one picture for do you, it. Do you, do you think it could be, uh, you know, the nice, expensive car, the big house, the, the well, husband? I'm, the I'm very, kids. very different. Um, okay. You know, my, my happiness comes a lot from what I can bring to the table. Okay. So, you know... Um, I need to feel involved in the community. I need to feel like I'm being put to good use, put it this way. I hear you. You know, so it doesn't really matter for me what I have because, look, I had a tough upbringing, so I, it was not always easy. So I've been at a stage of my life when I had nothing because after I moved from Mauritius down to Melbourne, I was kicked out of the street for like a year and a half. Wow. So I went from having things to having absolutely nothing and having to line up to get food, wow. you know. So then... Being able, when once I came off the street, um, you know, I went into World Vision, I was finding sponsors for kids, and there was, there's something that happened where my life, and it made me realize that it doesn't, it's not about what I'm going to have. Yeah. It's about what I can bring to the table okay. for other people, for people who are cross, well, who, you know, our lives cross, and I don't know if I'm ever going to see you again. Yeah. Um, it's a responsibility to just kind of like being able to do the right thing at all times. So for me, if I could be involved in the community, help them kids, you know, um, empower women to work through their trauma, yeah. and um, that, would, that would look amazing. That's what's up. <laughs> that's what's up. So, so, you, so you, you want to give back. You want to give back to the community. You want to give back to people that's, that's fallen. You know, yes. You want to give them a shoulder yes. to, to rest their heads on you know, when needed. That, that's correct. And encourage the, the, the storytelling. You know, everybody's got a story, and... Uh, you know, sometimes we can sit and think, oh, my story, a bit of shame of this, maybe that, maybe that. But to open up a platform yeah. for it will be ideal. And obviously you've got, you know, mediums such as music. You've got poetry. You've got so many different ways where people can actually have go inside of themselves and find out and work through their trauma. Because if everybody works towards a better version of themselves, then we are also collectively working for a better place. I hear what so, you're saying. You know, so it's not a matter of uh, judging or who's got a better story to tell. It's a matter of like, geez, we all have something to bring to the table. No doubt. And you know, um, the funny thing about it, like you were saying just before, you came out here in the first year of being out here in Australia, you know, you, you end up being um, homeless and stuff like that. But you know what, to what I can see right now, if you never had the hard times, then you would never know what the good times are like. And the good times looking good right now. Definitely. That's so true. That's, that's so up. true. That's yes. Made me appreciate things and work for things very differently. Um, so out here in Australia, what, what type of roadblocks do indie female artists um, have out here? I can't talk for everyone, but I, from my own experience, yeah. um, <clears throat> sometimes it's the expectations that they will have. So I think we actually have to work way harder than guys when it comes to the opportunities and being given the same opportunities as men. Yeah. And um, there are certain, you know, uh, stereotypes. So if I'm a black woman and I'm coming up there, I should be willing to show a lot of skin and shake my booty. There's no other way of saying it. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a lot of that okay. going on there. Okay, and this is the stereotype. So if you can't really fit a certain way, like, you know, I've been told one time, if, you know, people don't like what they see, they don't like, they don't want to hear what you want to say. That's and crazy. I'm like, okay, that's crazy. Like, that's you know, what, what's happening? 
So I think that's definitely a roadblock where females feel like they have to um, sometimes maybe, you know, uh, come out differently just so they can get those opportunities. I hear that. You know? I hear that. Um, even life balance will be something else to yeah. think about. And we all have to balance for life, but, you know, and I don't say women have it harder than men or anything like that, but a lot of fellow artists that I also know are also single mothers or, yeah. you know, yeah. and uh, they're having to shuffle with all of that. No, nah, I totally understand what you're saying because in, in, in a male-dominated dom um, industry, mm -hmm. which is rap, you know, from, from overseas to around the world, women are always going to have it a bit more harder as being a female MC because it's ma mainly male-dominated. Not mm -hmm. to say that they couldn't do it, because mm -hmm. we have got the great, greatest um, female MCs out there like Missy Elliott and, yes. and Nicki Minaj and Lil Kim and you know a bunch of them. So, um, but it's it's a hard road for for females. So I understand. Mm. I mean, but you know what? That coffee is smelling real good right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> we um we it definitely is. gotta have ha have a coffee over here. You know what I mean? I'm down with that. So, I'm um, down with that too. Yes. All yes, for yes. caffeine. My lonely nights are filled with a ten device Love on my mind, I'm feeling high No strings attached, I thought I had it all figured out for love Cheers, cheers, cheers. how you like the coffee, yeah? Absolutely Smell amazing, good? smells good, tastes good That's what's up, that's what's up <laughs> We are in the capital city of coffee Melbourne. Melbourne. I didn't know that Yes, I yes You learn is. something every day Yeah, nobody drinks coffee like we do for real. Yes, and we have the most diverse range of coffees and names and milks and that other countries don't necessarily fuss about. Coffee is coffee. For us, it's like, no, no, no. With my almond, flat white, no sugar, with this, with that, you're like, I hear it's that. an art. I'm going I'm I'm to be honest <laughs> with you, I'm a green, green tea drinker. Mm -hmm. But when I do come down to the studios here, you know, I, I, I do coffee. like their coffee, so for real. You know, so, um, okay. So... How do you deal with the pressure? How do you do, deal with the pressure um, as far as trying to be a you know independent musician? Um, uh, well, I try to always focus on trying to do something for my mind, body, and soul. Uh -huh. You know, to, so I don't neglect any part. <laughs> yep, I hear that. <laughs> so you know, it could be as simple as going to the gym. Sometimes I go away on a retreat on my own. I don't even tell my friends about it. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, he because is they're, like, everybody. they're like, where are you going? I'm like, somewhere you're not going. Because I need a break from everyone. Don't take it personally. Like, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you, you need to get away sometimes. You do, you, you do. Know I mean, you, um, yeah, you just need that get away and be alone sometimes. It's good for you. It's very good for you. Um, so, yeah, that's what I try to, you know, and writing and obviously also chilling out with the friends, talking about things. Because sometimes you can't go and deal with pressure just by bottling things in. That's one of my tracks. Don't bottle up. Bottle up, bottle up. <laughs> I bottle up. Yeah, we got to check that song out. Yeah. So are the, are the performance um, opportunities balanced out here for females in Australia? Uh, uh, look, um, I think it's all about who you know yeah. in that industry anyhow. Um, I can't say that there's a clear unbalance with the performing acts. Like, yeah. look, if I look at the, even the Jamaican festival, the yes. GMFF uh, that went past in uh, March this year, yeah. there were not many female artists. Wow. Yeah, so you, wow. had, you had a few female artists who were part of a band, but as solo artists, yeah. there are not many. Now, I don't know, I, I can't say that, it's a, uh, that they're not being given the same opportunities. I'm wondering where they are. Yeah. Do we have the, as much, do we make as much noise for them as we do for other artists? So, you know, I think they are out there. We just don't have that platform the same. It's not the, an equal platform. I hear that. So there's a couple of doors that need to be knocked down out here for female artists. Yes. Out of all the artists that you like, name us one of your favorite female artists and, 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 and one of the albums. Well, uh, Miss Education of Lowing Hill was like my Bible. You know, I was just thinking about that. <laughs> I was Did just you? thinking. No of, way. Like, to me, I think that's one of the best albums ever, ever. Like, yes. you know, um, as far as... R&B, mm -hmm. you know, and rapping. And rapping. And you the know. lyrical yeah, content yeah. She, is she, just she, amazing. She, she's on it. You know, there's a lot of pain that she was going through that mm. album. Um, the funny thing, it, yo, this is crazy, because I was just thinking about that album, and um, I, was, I was like, 
I wonder if she's going to say that. And there you, you go. That, you know what I, mean? <laughs> I so. was listening to that all the time. And it's amazing. Look, she's only, only really just produced released that one album. And she's yeah. still touring it up until today. Yeah. So that tells you when, you know, it passes the test of time. Oh, well, Lauren Hill. That's yeah. just, that's, that's good stuff. You know, yeah. if you're still touching people um, and different generations with the same album, this is amazing. That's right. Yeah, the album, the album was powerful. Yes, definitely was. All right, so you actually have told me your favorite artist and your favorite al album. That was quick. That was quick. <laughs> yeah, so um, for you, what's more important, lyrics or beats? You know what I mean? What's more important for you? I'm a lyrical girl, you know. All right. I, you know, I, well, if they can't exist separately. You yeah. know, if you give me a beat without lyrics, it's like you're throwing at me a canvas, and I'm like, okay, let me paint it. All right, that's what's up. That's what's up. You know. So, so you write only two beats, or you sometimes you just hit, get on the pad, and just start putting in work without a beat. I generally, so for me, I write um, two ways. Sometimes it's a beat. If I have a beat first, I will write to the beat. Other times it's a melody where they then build a track around it. Um, you know, but generally my lyrics come first, no matter what. And look, it depends too. If you're up in the club. Probably ain't listening to the lyrics much. Just want to yeah. boogie. You, you're looking out for a good dance. beat and a yeah. good hook, and that's yes, it. Yes, you know. So really depends on the situation as well. But if I'm home and I'm chilling and I just want to listen to some music, I need some lyrics in there that will just I get me some oh, thought provoking or just get me thinking about something I never really thought about. So, so um, yeah, I would, I would love to see you in the studios and how how you come about and how how you do your thing. So with some of the songs. Are you one of them M female MCs that just get in over there, write your bars down, spit it, or do you take time with your music? I generally have already written all of my music before I hit the studio, so my, my, the process of writing for me is very personal, so it's not something I do at the studio, you know. Um, so you go in there and just put that work? Then I just get there work. and it's just da 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 da, -da record it. And then I might, you know, we might chill and then just listen to it and break it down. Right about. It's more important for me that I get everything out yeah. of me when I yeah. get to the studio in the right, um, you know, with the right mindset. So, you know, when you write a track at, the, at that very time, you're feeling a certain way. That's why yeah. you've written it. And if you wait a little bit too long, that emotion is not the same anymore. Yeah. So your delivery... Yeah won't be the same. Yeah, so, right. you know, after the writing process, just want to get there, take it all out, and then we can get to the technical side of things. I hear that. <laughs> That's what's up. So I hear, is there any um, independent artist you like or you want to give a shout out to? Uh, yes, I mean, uh, Kai, have you heard of Kai? No, I haven't heard of Kai. Yeah, she's an R&B, uh, upcoming R&B artist in, uh, in Melbourne. Oh, wow. Yes, she's doing amazingly well. I'm very, very proud of her. No doubt. I've gone to see her show just a couple of months ago or so. Um, uh, so, yeah, I support this girl 100%. So, is she um, Australian or Mauritian too? No, she is actually of African descent as well. Wow. And uh, that's what's interesting right now because I'm seeing a lot of... You know, African girls come up and being very, you know, open with the music and where it's they come. It's starting to take off it's out here in Melbourne. A lot of it? Afro beats. Correct. You know, um, a lot of female um, MCs and singers are just coming up. And I'm not sure where you'll be coming up from, but you're coming out. <laughs> you know, because sometimes, you know, my ears are always close to the net. You know, I'm mm. always watching what's going on in Melbourne and overseas. So it's like, and you have a lot of... Um, female artists from Sydney too, you know, that's really doing their thing. And it's like, yo, where, where did she come up from? Yes, you yes. I mean? um, it's Sampa the Great is another. Okay. Yes, Sampa the Great is... Sampa the Great. I, I've yeah, heard of her. You've heard I've of her. I've heard of her. I've yeah. heard of her. Yes, She's yes, 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 killing yes. it. And I love her style. And yes. she just performed at Coachella and she made sure that she was... She had the Zambian flag up there to kind wow. of be like, we are actually the first Zambian who's ever set food there so I'll you know it's amazing it's great to see that's crazy you know a girl from out here in Australia doing Coachella Coachella yes you know that's crazy that's independently that's like yo <laughs> that gives you a lot more um, you know one to keep doing this you know what I mean because you can see other people coming out of Australia you're like yo if they could do it yes you know what I mean you can so make can it happen I. yes that's so true that's what's up so, so those, those are the two um, ladies out here in Australia you like anybody else Anybody you want to give a shout out to? You know, any musicians you work with? <laughs> I'm sure. Well, a lot to my, my engineer, Jesse, who's actually 
a young guy, but we just started working together, which is really interesting because it's like we're mixing old school with uh, fresh blood. And I'm like, okay, let's see what we come up. But the style that's coming up is dope. So I thank him a lot for that. And uh, Terry Jervis as well, who, you know, um, actually, uh, uh, what do you say? He, he made the, the way for me towards in music. Because okay. he actually, I met him when I was 16. Oh, wow. So we are, he was, he's a, you know, he's based in London. Yeah. Um, but Is he a were, producer? Or, uh, he's a producer and uh, he had a media company, Gem Entertainment Media, and he was working for the BBC at that time. So they were going around the islands to recruit new talent. Wow. So I met him at the very, very difficult time of my life, and I had no, no idea who I met, but I was just in the studio, and he said, yeah, I want to keep working with you. Wow. I'm going to have to go check him out. Yes, please. That would be awesome. Have to go check him out. I hope for him to come down um, towards the end of the year or so. Okay, that's what's up. Is there any um, Australian artist you'd like to work with? Actually, in Australia or overseas? Who, who could you think of? Like, you just gave me a couple of females um, just before who, who you like. Is there anybody, male or female, in Australia or internationally that you would love to work with? Yes, look, I, I really like Jack Young style, you know. Okay. And, you, you know, we had a chat about it some time ago, so I'm thinking it would be great if we could actually collab and get something done, um, you know. And the girls, obviously, if I could get with Sempa or Kai, that Ooh. would be awesome. That would be a hot. mad duo. Yeah, yeah know. I hear that. I hear that. <laughs> That's what's up. Um, uh, yes, and every other opportunity, like, but hasn't, uh, but I haven't even, but hasn't come my way yet. Like, you know, I'm open to this. Like, you've got to have an open mind when it comes to music and art. Like, you know, so. So, what's it looking like for the next twelve months for you with music? You know, um, especially now with the world started up already again. We ain't got no lockdowns. Mm -hmm. Cross your fingers. Ain't no more gonna come around. What's it going? What's what's it like gonna be for you for the next twelve months? What's up? For the next 12 months, look, I've, I mentioned to you I'm working on an EP at the moment. So I, okay. I, I really want to, you know, complete that and work on to promoting that EP. Nice. And uh, hit a few other songs that I have. I have a library of tracks that I just haven't put into action yet. So my aim over the next 12 months is to get really down and dirty in the, in the studio. And put it down. Put it all down. Are you yeah. going to have any collabs on it? I'm hoping to, definitely. That's, That's something that I'm looking into. Yes, will be amazing to get that, you know, maybe at a, on, on a few of my other tracks coming up. I've got a few reggae tracks that I already thought of jatting. Maybe we could collab and do something onto that. Dope. Yeah, that would be good. And just keeping an eye out for any gig, um, you know, I'm performing at... Uh, Platform 3059 on okay. the 13th of November. So that's a little... 13th of November, all right. Yes. I'm going to have to pull up. I'm yeah. going to have to pull up with my Should wife and see what's up. Should be good. Yes, please. For You're real. welcome. For You're real. welcome. That's what's up. And trying to also uh, um, set up into the community, like I mentioned to you before, um, trying to find a venue, uh, which I have in my, my eye on to a venue in Heidelberg. Okay. Where we might be able to do something regularly, like monthly where people get to come down and uh, tell their stories. I just, I'm all for platforms. And That's I'm all so for like opening up the platform for guys too. Cause you know, hear that. you know, people sometimes will just be like, oh yeah, you have feminists, you have this. And I'm like, look, let's not get into this uh, touchy top subject right now. <laughs> yeah, yo, you, you a female artist trying to do something in, in a male dominated, you know, you um, got to. Uh, area. So, shit, they can't tell you that. No. I take my hats off to you for that. Well, thank you. What I did forget to ask you was, though, with your first album that you had, you know, um, how many songs did you just drop some singles, or did you drop the album already, or was it just a couple singles? So I dropped, I dropped a couple of singles out of the album, four tracks. So I've got Taboo, Love Drug. You Left Me Numb, yep. um, Make It Right. So those tracks are out. Yep. Um, I'm still going to revisit some of the other tracks before I release those. Okay. Um, but the, all the tracks of that first album are all, they're all surrounding the topic of self-healing, you know. No uh, doubt. The journey, a process of actually getting real. So that album is very special to me because I had to put my ego aside, put my hurt aside, put everything and just be real with myself. No doubt. And um, some pretty crazy things happen in that moment, you know, because, you know, we can all go through life and be like, we have reasons and excuses or why certain things happen or why I am the way I am today. I yes. am like this because dot, dot, dot happened. And yeah. then you're like, okay, well, where's the point of responsibility where you go, well, 
I am like that and I owe it to myself and everybody around me to take a deeper look at myself to make a change. So that album is very, very special to me. I no hope. doubt. And, and the viewers like us, we get a chance to really get to know you as a person. You know what I mean? Because we want to know your pains and struggles. We got to listen to what you're saying out there in your album. And now, is that album on all platforms? Yes, so it's out on Spotify, on YouTube, and Apple Music. No um, doubt. Uh, yes, so that, and that's, you know, I will release the next few tracks on the same platforms again. Yep. I also have them onto my um, uh, website at uh, iamsafaya.com. Iamsafaya.com, okay, that's know, what's up. Then you can, you know, in there, I obviously have some of my poetry as well, which, you know, you can't put onto the, uh, the music platforms. <laughs> this is crazy. This, this, this is a woman with so much talent. She sings, she writes, she raps, she does poetry. You know, that's, yo, that's, 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 that's a threat to, to reckon with. You know, they, they better be ready. <laughs> they better be ready. You know what I mean? Because you're coming true, for real. For real, you know, um, now I've had a lot, a lot of fun um, interviewing you, you know what I mean? And, and I'm definitely so about to go and peep you, you a little bit more of your music, you know what I mean? And um, you've got a new fan right here. Thank and you. And we're going to be following you 100%. And a new friend. There well, you I'm, go. I'm, you know, I'm very, very happy there you that go. you that's to what's talk up. about all those topics and being able to sit here from, you know, um, having a black brother next to me and we can no actually doubt. have those conversations and openly wow. and not, so I'm, I'm grateful. That's what's up, that's what's up. <laughs> Yo, so viewers, Sophia, go check her out, check out all her links. You know, she mentioned some of her links over there, you know what I mean? Um, follow the lady, follow independent hip hop out here in Australia, you know what I mean? Because a lot of these people are doing it, do, doing it hard. And um, they're really talented, and they, 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 they need to be heard a lot more than what Australia's letting hip-hop artists be heard, okay? I'm Rock That's Quest, awesome. your host with the most. This is Sapphire. Thank you so much. You know much. what I mean? <laughs> Thanks, um, You source media. Get them entertainment. We out. <laughs> Thank you. That's Thank I feel their voice